These three image sliders probably look nearly identical to you, but there are massive differences between them that really separate junior programmers from senior developers. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to build all three different tiers of this image slider by first starting with the most basic version and then slowly adding new features onto it until we get to the second and finally the third version. And this third version covers tons of features that I've not seen in any other tutorials or blogs about image sliders. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And as you can see here, we have the final working version of our project. We have really smooth animations for everything and it all looks really, really good. And this is what we're gonna work our way towards. But to get started, we're just gonna have a blank feed application that just has an H1 with high inside of it. And we're gonna start with the most basic form of an image slider before we move on to more complex versions. Also, I've started out by just getting five images of cars. You can use whatever images you want. It really doesn't matter. So to get started, we first want to essentially get an array of all of the different images we're going to pass into our image slider. And the easiest way for us to do that instead of eat is just going to be to import these images. So we can say like import car one from, and we're just going to import that from images slash car one, just like that. And we're going to do this for all the different cars. So we have two, three, four, and five, because that's the different images I have. So let's go two, three, four, five. And then finally, we're going to put that inside of an images array where we're just going to have car one, car two, car three, car four, and car five. So now we at least have all of these images inside of an array. And essentially, this is just a string which gives us the URL for the image. So like the source URL, that's what this is going to be. This is just one way to do it. You could put these inside the public folder too. It's entirely up to what you want. And then inside of our app, we're going to create some kind of image slider component where we're going to pass in our image URLs, and that's just going to be our images like that. There we go. Now, if we close this off, we can create this component. So we can say image slider.tsx because we are using TypeScript, and we're going to export a function called image slider. There we go. We know this is going to take in some image URLs. And we should give this a prop type. So we'll say image slider props. And let's create that type up here, image slider props. And that's image URLs, which is just an array of strings. There we go. Now if we give that a save, it looks like most of our errors have gone away. We just need to use this variable for the final error to go away. Now inside of our image slider, really I want to think about the logic for how we're going to solve this problem. And to me, the thing that makes the most sense is we're going to want to store the index of the image we're currently showing. So we need some type of state to do that. I'm going to say like image index and set image index. We can set that to some use state. There we go. And let's by default set that to zero. And let's just expand this a little bit so we have a little bit more room to work with. So now we have that state. And let me just make sure I import use state so we can use that. There we go. Now we're storing what index we're in, so that way when we click the next or previous button, it'll move us to the next or previous image. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to create the HTML we're going to be using. It's actually relatively simple. We're going to have a div that kind of wraps everything for us, and then inside that div we need a previous button, a next button, as well as the image itself. So let's come in here with our image, and we're going to give it a source in here, and that source is going to be whatever our current image is, so we can actually say image URLs, and we want to get the image index, just like that. So we have our URLs and we're getting the index for the one that we want to show. Then what I can do inside of here is just close this off and move on to our buttons that we're going to have. So we're going to have a next and a previous button. Now for these buttons to get the correct icons, I'm actually going to use an icon library. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to say NPM I and it's called Lucid React. If I just click enter, that'll install this library. And this is essentially a library with a bunch of different icons inside of it. So we can actually import the icons we want to use. For example, if we want a big arrow left icon we can do that from here so i can just come up to the top import this is going to be from that lucid react library and we're going to have that arrow left and it's going to be the big one so i believe it's called arrow big left and we're going to do arrow big right so we have both of them we can change this down here to the correct one and create a brand new button for the arrow big right so now if we just give this a save and do nothing else, and we make sure we import our image slider, we should at least see something on the right hand side of our screen as long as everything's working. As you can see, we just have a giant image showing up of our car because our images are quite large. We still need to scale them down to the proper size to fit in our screen. And you can see here we have our left and right button showing up quite small. 
Now, the very first thing I want to do is I want to constrain the size of our image slider. And to do that, I generally want it to actually take up the full size it has. So for styling, I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to say the width should be 100%. And I want to say that the height should be 100%. Because as I said, I want this to essentially grow to be the full size. But in our app, I'm going to wrap it inside of a div to actually constrain what the size of this will be. So we'll come in here with a div. And this div, we're going to give our styling to make it a little bit smaller. So in our case here, let's come in here with some styles. We'll say that the max width is going to be 1200 pixels. So we'll just say 1200 pixels. I'm gonna give it a normal width here of 100%, so it'll scale to the exact full size. I'm gonna give it a height here of 500 pixels. And we'll say that our margin is going to be zero and auto. There we go. So if we give that a quick save, you'll still see that nothing's quite working. And that's just because we need to make sure we size our image properly to fit within that constraint that we've created. I'm going to go back into here, and instead of doing manual styles, I'm actually going to use CSS instead. So I'll give it a class name. I will just say it's going to be a class name of image slider image. There we go. Now let's create a CSS style sheet. So we'll call this image slider CSS. And in here, we're going to have our image slider image. And here, I just want the object fit to be in a cover. And I also want the width to be 100% the height to be 100% and the display to be block. Now, if we give that a quick save, and we make sure that this is all saved and we do a refresh. We'll see it's still not quite working because I need to make sure that I import that new style sheet we just created. And now, as you can see, our image has been constrained to that container that we have created. And the way that we've been able to do this relatively easily is by making sure we use this object fit cover so it knows an overflow. Same thing here with width and height. And the reason I have this display block is because if you don't, you see there's a space at the bottom of our image. These buttons move slightly. So that's just to make sure our image doesn't take up any other space than it needs to. Now, one thing you could do here instead of manually hard coding the height is you could use some type of aspect ratio instead. So we could say like aspect ratio is going to be, for example, like one over two. And then you can see it's going to give us an aspect ratio. Obviously, our aspect ratio would need to be something entirely different to give us more of a rectangular approach. But this is another great approach as well. And let's just say that that's what we want to do. We'll do like a 7 over 3 or something like that. Maybe we'll do like 10 to 4, maybe 10 to 6. There we go. That looks good enough. Now, another thing I want to do before we get too much further in my CSS, this is something I like to do inside of any project I work on, is I like to select all the elements as well as the before and the after elements. I just like to set up my box sizing to be border box. It makes sizing things just so much easier. Now from here, we should style our buttons so that they show up over top of the left and the right hand section of our image. So inside of here on our buttons, I'm gonna give a class to them. We're just gonna say image slider button. I'm gonna give that exact same class to both of our buttons. There we go. So now we can go into our CSS, image slider button. Make sure I spell that properly. And now we can go ahead and style this. First, I'm going to make this div here a position of relative. That way we can actually style our elements inside of it. So by giving this a position of relative, I can absolutely position our buttons inside of it. And let's just make sure. There we go. Now inside of here, I want to first remove all the styles from my button. So I'll just say all unset. That removes all the styles from our button. And if you're unfamiliar with that property, I'll link a video where I explain it more in depth. Then I'm going to set the display of them to be block. I want the position to be absolute. That'll move them essentially over top of each other, which is great. And now we can put them where we want them. For example, I want them to be top and bottom of zero. That's just going to make sure that they fill the entire size of the container. And you can't really see this, but our buttons are right where my mouse is right now. They're just hard to see because they are black currently. And the next thing that I want to do is give them some padding. So we have a little bit of space around them. So we'll say padding of one REM. And finally here, I want to add a little bit of a cursor pointer. So that way when I hover over these buttons, you can see that I get that pointer cursor instead. Now, obviously I want one button to be on the left and the other on the right. For now, in order to see what these buttons look like, I'm gonna come in here to our image slider button. I wanna select the children, which are our icons. I'm gonna change this stroke to be white and the fill to be black. That way, no matter what background color we're on, we should be able to see them. Now you can see they're stacked right on top of each other. So to make one on the left, I'm just gonna come in here style and this one is going to be a left property of zero and we'll just copy that paste it down here but we're going to make this one a right property also to make these a little bit easier to see i'm going to increase the size to 2 rem for the width and height so let's say 2 rem height is 2 rem and now if we save you can see our buttons are much larger 
Finally, to make it so we can really see when we hover over top of these, I'm gonna give our button a hover style. So we're gonna give it a hover style here. I wanna make it the background color. So the background color here, I'm just going to make a partially transparent black color that should show up on pretty much any image unless it's pretty much entirely black. Now you can see when I hover, we get that nice blacker background behind it. And in order to make it a little bit easier on the eyes, I'm gonna do a transition on this. So we'll say we're gonna transition our background color. Let's just do a quick transition of 100 milliseconds, ease in, out. Now when we hover, we get a nice transition as opposed to just the harsh jumping between one to the next. Now obviously our buttons do nothing, so we need to make them do something next. So instead of our image slider here, let's add an on click. So we can say on click and we'll just say show next image and we'll create this function in just a second. We're just gonna do the exact same thing here, which will be show next and this one will be show previous. So function show next image. And we're also going to create a function called show previous image. And inside of here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our image index. We're gonna take in our current index and we're gonna determine what the new index should be. So if our index is currently equal to zero, we want to loop all the way around. So we're just essentially going to take our image URLs and we're gonna get the length of it and subtract one. So we're just gonna loop back to the beginning. Otherwise, we're gonna return whatever our index is minus one. Now this back button should always move me backwards one image. And as we can see, it's moving us back and it's always looping around, which is great. Now let's see if this show next button can work. We'll copy this down. It's gonna be very similar, but obviously instead of doing a subtraction here, we're gonna do an addition. And here we wanna to check to see if our index is at the end. So if our index is equal to our image URLs dot length minus one, well now we're already at the end. So instead we should loop back to the beginning, which is at zero. Now, if we go forward, you can see that's working. If I go backwards, you can see it's working. And if I get all the way to the end, you can see it's properly looping me back around. So we have a fully functional, very simple version of our image slider. Now, obviously, probably the biggest thing you're noticing that's missing from this as we move to the second version of our image slider is animations. As you can see, we're just jumping to the next image, which is not a super smooth transition. Instead, I want to show an animation as we transition between different images. And this is pretty hard to do if we only have one image in the DOM. We need to obviously have the image we're transitioning to in the DOM as well. So in our case, since we have so few images, it's easier just to render all the images inside of the DOM. So I'm actually gonna loop through all of our images and render each one out as its own image component. But I'm gonna do that inside of its own div because we're gonna need to do some special styling to make sure that we slide to the correct one properly. So inside of here, I'm gonna take our image URLs. I'm gonna map through each one of our URLs. And in here, I just want to return that exact same image that I had before. So I'm just gonna take this and move it up we just need to add a few things. First of all, we're gonna add a key, which is just our current URL. And in the source, we're going to add in our URL as well. Now, if we give that a save, you can see it's rendering out all of our different images, which is not ideal. Instead, we want to render them out side by side and then slide between the correct image. This is where the styling on our div is going to come in handy. So in here, we're gonna add some styles. First of all, I want the width of this to be 100%. So we'll say width 100%, height 100%. That way it just fills the full container. And then if we add an overflow of hidden, that's at least going to hide everything that's not in the screen. And currently, since our images take up the full size, it's only gonna show one image at a time. And obviously the next and previous buttons aren't doing anything because we're not taking into account what our current image index is. Also, if we remove this overflow hidden, they're still stacked on top of each other vertically. To fix that, we can go here and add a display property of flex. Now they're gonna be stacked side by side. As you can see, I can scroll, they're all stacked side by side. And I'm gonna keep that overflow hidden off for now so we can kind of see what's going on because on our image, I'm actually going to add a translate style to it. So in our style, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say that we want to translate this image. And in our case, we essentially want to translate this image by 100% for each index that we're on. So I can say negative 100 times our image index. And I want to convert this into a percentage. So I can come in here and I can say that this is going to be a percent just like that. Now let's close off this, there we go. Give that a quick save. And now you'll notice, right now it's not quite 100% right, but as I click this button, you're noticing it's actually at least going through our different images. The reason it doesn't look 100% quite right is because we still haven't removed our overflow. So let's go ahead and get rid of that overflow. So we'll say overflow hidden, just like that. Also, there's a few styles we should probably change with our image to make sure that they fit in the correct size that we have. So for our image slider image, let's open this back up and add a few more styles to it. For example, flex shrink, we should change to zero. 
and flex grow, we should also change to zero. This just makes sure that the image will always retain the full size that it was before. It won't shrink or grow. It'll just stay this 100% size that we've set here. So now we're still moving through the images just like we were before, and there's literally no difference. We still have no animation, but we can really easily animate this by adding a transition. So I can come in here and I can say I want to transition on the translate property since that's what we're changing on our image. And I want to animate over this for 300 milliseconds and we'll do an ease in out. Now if I save and I click next, you'll notice it has a really smooth transition. And when we move back to the beginning, you can see it's animating back and forth between the beginning and the end. So now we have this really smooth transition and all of this is from a simple transition property and the fact that we're moving this translate property based on what image we currently want to show. Now the reason this works a little bit easier to understand, if we go back to the first image here, our translate property is set to zero on our first image. And actually our translate property is set to zero for all of our images. So that means all of our images perfectly show up in that strip as we saw before. Now when we move to the next image, we now are moving all of our images by 100% to the left. And all that does is just show the second image on the screen. If we move again, you'll now notice that the third image is shown because they're moved by 200% off to the left. So we're just moving by one image at a time every time we click forward or next. And obviously if we get to the end, it's just moving us all the way back to the beginning or all the way back to the end. Now one thing that we can do that's really simple to actually add a little bit more pizzazz to it is give our button an animation for when we hover over it that actually makes it really obvious that the button is moving left or it's moving right. And all of this can be done in CSS. So what we can do where we have the hover effect, I wanna add another hover effect. This one is gonna be for our slider button, but I wanna get the child element inside of it. So whenever I hover over the button, I wanna make the child essentially do kind of like a cool squishing animation that really emphasizes that it is there. So we're gonna create an animation. We're gonna call this squish. We're gonna say it's 200 milliseconds and we'll say it's gonna be ease in out. Let's get rid of all this other stuff that filled in there. And let's create that animation. So we'll say add keyframes. This is called squish. And all I wanna do is essentially scale it down and scale it out. So the starting and ending of my animation, I want to be the same. I just wanna change it in the middle at 50%. So in our case, I'm gonna scale the X direction by 1.4. So I'm gonna make it wider while scaling the Y direction by 0.6. So I'm making it shorter. Now you can see when I hover over this, you can see it has this really cool kind of bouncy squish animation. They both do. And it really emphasizes that we're going left or we're going right whenever we hover over one of these different elements. And it gives it just a little bit extra pop to the users when they're using your site and it makes it feel more professional and enjoyable. Now, the final thing I want to add, which is the biggest change between version one and two, besides all the extra animations, is going to be adding buttons at the bottom so we can move to a specific image inside of the slider. So I'm going to kind of minimize out of all this stuff that we've already done. And down here, I'm going to add a div that's going to contain all of our different buttons. So again, we're just going to loop through our image URLs. I want to map through these. In our case, I don't care what the URL is, but I do care about the index because that's the only thing I care about for swapping between different elements. So let's make sure we wrap this inside of parentheses. And we're gonna come in here, get a return value from it, there we go. And in here, I'm just going to have a button for each one of the different dots that we're going to have. And let's just for now, render out the index inside of them so you can see what this looks like. You can see we have five buttons, zero, one, two, three, and four. Now obviously we're gonna style these and put them in the correct place. You can already see we have different buttons for selecting different images. And if I just go ahead and I add an on click, that lets me set the image. So I can say it's a function, that is going to set the image index to the current index. Now, if I click on four, it moves to image four, zero moves to image zero, two moves here. And you'll notice our slide animation still works just fine because all we're doing is changing a translate property. So all of that automatically works. There's no extra code we need to do. But now we can navigate to each individual thing. All we need to do is style it so it looks better than these random buttons we have here. So the first step is gonna be on this outer div actually. I wanna style it so it's in the bottom of the screen on the middle. So we can say that we're gonna position it absolutely. There we go. And we're gonna say we want our bottom here to be 0.5 REM, just so it's pretty much on the bottom. Our left is going to be zero. Let me make sure I change this to a comma. There we go. Our translate property is going to be a negative 50%. So that way it's going to be centered. A combination of left, which should be 50% here, and a translate of negative 50% essentially put this directly in the dead center, as you can see, which is really, really great. Next, we can change the display here to flex and give them a gap of 0.25 REM, just to give a little bit of space between each one of our different buttons. Now we can move on to styling our buttons, which we're gonna use a class for. And I should also add a key here as well. So we'll add our key as an index and a class name, which is image slider. We'll call these our dot buttons because essentially they're going to be a dot. 
Now, obviously, I don't want to render out just the index inside of here. So instead, I'm actually going to render out a icon again, but I'm going to render a different icon for the selected image versus all of the other images. So if my index is equal to the image index, that means that we're on the currently selected index. And I want to use the circle dot icon that I'm going to be getting from that lucid icons. So let's just make sure that we import that icon. There we go. Otherwise, if we aren't inside of the current image, I just want to use the circle icon. So we're going to say circle. I'm going to get that again from that same exact library. Close this all off, give it a quick save. And now you can see we have a different icon based on which one of the buttons we're inside of. Our styles are still not great, but we can go ahead and use this class right here to do all the styling in our CSS. So this is going to be kind of fairly similar to the buttons we did up here. So I'm actually going to copy everything from this button. I'm going to paste it inside of here and we'll just change it as we need. First of all, they don't need to be absolutely positioned with top or bottom. And we really don't need to even worry about a padding because we're just going to add a manual width and height of one REM to both of these. So we'll say one REM just like that. So now you can see that they're positioned and sized properly. I can also remove this background color since we're not going to be using it, but I do want to style the actual icons inside of here. So we're going to use our image slider dot button. I'm going to get the children inside of here. I'm going to change the stroke to white, the fill to black again, so we can see them on two different colored backgrounds. I'm going to change the height to 100% and the width to 100% just so the icons are the proper size. Now, as you can see, they already look so much better than they did before. I just want to add a subtle animation so we know which one we're currently hovering over top of really easily. So we're going to say image slider dot button. When we hover on it, all we want to do is scale it up. So we'll say like scale is going to be slightly bigger. Let's, for example, say 1.2. So now if I hover, you can see that it's slightly bigger. Now we just want to make sure it's a smooth transition. So up here, we'll add a transition for the scale property. We'll do 100 milliseconds, ease in out, nice and simple. And now we have a nice smooth transition for each one of our different buttons. And this is really great. And this is what I would consider like the second tier of image slider. You can see it has a lot of the functionality you would want from an image slider. I mean, pretty much everything you would want, but there's one big problem. And that's that this is horribly inaccessible. For example, I'm going to be clicking the tab key to tab through. I'm clicking tab, but do you know which element I'm currently on? You can see when I click space, it does something. So I'm clearly on this element right here, but I have no way of knowing that. See, now I'm on this element right here, and I have no way of visually understanding what I'm on. Also, we have no good labels. For example, all of our buttons are just icons. They don't have a label, so there's no meaning for a screen reader. This is unusable by anyone that can't use a mouse and can't see what they're doing. So the very first thing we can do to try to move to a more accessible version, and this is what I would consider version three and the final version of our image slider, is just make sure all of our styles deal with focus and hover at the same time. So every single place that we have hover, we just wanna search for it and also make sure we're handling focus. So in our case, we'll say image slider button, and we wanna do when focus is visible, we also want to render out this background color. So if I give this a save and I start using tab, you'll notice I at least get the background color showing up on these two buttons when I tab over them. That's better than nothing. I want to do the same exact thing down here. So I'm just going to copy this down, focus visible. So now at least I get that same squish animation as well when I'm doing my tabbing around. And let's find the last place where we use hover. So this is going to be image slider dot button. And when focus is visible, I also want to do this as well. Now you can see when I'm going through, I'm at least getting animations on all of these, and they're at least a little bit more obvious where I'm in. Now, in my opinion, this still isn't enough though, especially if people have a hard time seeing, which is why most people use the keyboard instead of the mouse, or they just wanna move around quickly, but it's not always super obvious where you are unless you know where to look. So instead, I want to add an outline as well, which is something that's normally there by default, but since we used all unset, it removed it for us. So we're gonna say image slider dot button when I want to have the focus visible. And for the image slider button, when the focus is visible, what I want to do is I want to add an outline, which is just going to be automatic. So now you can see I get this nice, harsh outline around this, which makes it very obvious for me to see what is currently highlighted when I click through with the tab key. It's very easy for me to see. And the nice thing is when I'm doing my hovers, none of these effects are being applied. When I click on these buttons, they're not being applied. It's only when I'm using the tab key to move around. And that's because we use focus visible instead of just normal focus. We use normal focus. Now when I click on these buttons, for example, down here, you can see I'm gonna be getting that outline, which is not super ideal, which is why I'm using focus visible. So it's only for people that are using the tab key to navigate around. Now this is great for helping people that can visually see what's going on, but if someone can't see what's going on and they're using a screen reader, they still have no idea what control they're on because our controls are just icons. They don't have any meaning at all. 
So instead, we need to add labels to everything that is currently using an icon. So like each button needs to have a label that is going to tell you what that button does, as well as our images. Right now, our images don't have an alt tag, so we need to add an alt tag to describe what the image is. Because if you can't see the image, obviously you don't know what the image is. So let's start with our buttons because they're relatively straightforward. For our back button, we're going to give this an area label, and this is a way for you to label something for screen readers only. And we're just going to give it a label of view previous button, or I'm sorry, view previous image. There we go. And for our next button, I'm just going to say view next image, just like that. So we know what these two different buttons are doing. I'm also going to be adding a label down here. So in here, we're going to add a label for these buttons. And instead of saying view next or view previous, this is going to say view image and then whatever the actual image index is. So like view image one, view image two, and so on. I just need to reformat this slightly so we can actually use a string interpolation. There we go. So this will be like view image one, two, three, and so on. Lastly, for our images, I want to add an alt tag for each one. But the problem is right now, all I have is a URL. So instead, I want to make sure that my images object is actually an array that has a URL and it's going to have an alt tag as well that describes what this is. So for now, I'm just going to use kind of dummy data. We'll just say car one and then I'll replace all of these. So we'll have this one, this one, this one and this one. So we'll have car two, three, four and five. Obviously, on a real site, you would have real images and real alt tags that you're using. But for our cases, this is just for demonstration purposes. Now we have our image URLs, and this is really probably just called images nowadays because it's not just URLs, it has alt tags as well. So inside of our image slider, we should probably change this to say images, and this should say images. And instead of being a string URL, this is a, or a string array, I'm sorry, this is an object array that has a URL string and an alt string, just like that. So now I can make sure that I update all places is where I have image URLs to say images, just like that. This should say images. And down here, this should say images as well. And here, instead of this being a URL, this is actually a combination of a URL and our alt tag. So now we can actually specify our alt tag on our image so we know what it is. So it'll say car one, two, three, and so on. And obviously, you should be more descriptive if you're actually doing a real website. So if we really quickly want to kind of see what this looks like for a screen reader, we can inspect our page. And inside of Google Chrome, you'll see I have this button right here that lets me view an accessible version of my page, like what a screen reader would kind of look like. If you want to be able to have this button as well, if you just hit Control Shift B and you search for accessibility, you can click this show accessibility button. And that's going to essentially show the accessibility outline for you. And you can see down here, there's this accessibility tab. Right here, it says enable full page accessibility. It's currently experimental, but this is what toggles that button in the top right corner. So you can see I have that button, but if I for some reason have this disabled and I reload, you'll notice that button is no longer there. So if you want to be able to see that button, you're going to want to make sure you toggle that experimental feature. And when we click on this and I bring all this back down, you can see exactly how someone that is using a screen reader would see our site. Our site would look like this. It would show them car one, car two, car three, car four, car five. And that's because currently we're showing all of our images on the DOM. We're going to fix this in a little bit, but right now it shows them all the images. Then we have a button that says view previous image, a button that says view next image, view image zero, one, two, three, four. So obviously I have one mistake. This should probably be indexed by one, so incremented by one. So wherever we're doing that, we should just add one to our index. There we go. Now if we inspect, you can see it says view image one, two, three, four, and five, which is super great. Now there's still a few things we need to fix. First, we're showing all of our images, which is not ideal. And secondly, you'll notice that each of our buttons has an image inside of it. That's just because we're using SVG icons and we want these to be hidden by default. Luckily, solving both these problems is essentially the same thing. So for all of our different icons that we're rendering, we want to add an area hidden property. And we're just going to set that equal to be true. So we'll say true. And actually, we don't even need to put true. We can just say area hidden because that'll by default make it true that it is hidden. And just by doing that, if I go and inspect my page for accessibility again, so we'll come in here, go to accessibility, all the way down here, you can see that this says ignored. It's just completely ignoring that image and the screen reader pretends the image doesn't exist, which is good because the image proves nothing to screen readers. It has no help at all. Instead, our button has the label that it needs. So all of our other buttons that have labels, we want to add that inside of our label. So we're going to add this here and we're going to add it here. I also want to add this to our image, but I only want the image that is not shown to be hidden. So in this case, I want to make sure that it's only hiding or not shown image. So we're going to get our index property here. And we're going to say if our image index 
is not equal to our index, that means we're not currently showing this image, so it should be hidden by the screen reader. So now if I just inspect our page and use that accessibility tab, again, now you can see only one image is being shown, our car three image. All the other ones are hidden. And if I go to the next one, you can now see car four is shown, car five, and so on. Another thing that we should do is change this div here that wraps everything into a section. The reason I'm doing that is it groups this entire section into one coherent section, essentially, for a screen reader. So screen readers knows that these are all grouped into one thing. We can also even give it a label. We can say area label, and we can just say that this is an image carousel or an image slider, whatever we want to call it. There we go. So now if we do a little bit more accessibility checking, you'll now see we have a region, which is an image slider, and that contains all the stuff for our image slider section. So at least people are using screen readers know, okay, everything in here is for our image slider. And once you get beyond it, you're obviously past the image slider. Now, another thing that's really helpful for screen readers is a lot of times when you have something that has a lot of controls, in our case, we have to tab through a lot of different things to get to the rest of the page. It's very common to want to skip that as a screen reader, especially something like an image carousel, which if you can't see is maybe not something you really care that much about going through. So you may want to skip the entire thing. This is very common in navigation. It's called a skip link. I actually have a full video covering it. I'll link in the cards in the description, but essentially we want to add a skip link that lets us skip the entire carousel and move on to the rest of the page. So in our case, what I'm going to do inside of our app, I'm just going to add a link to the very end of the page so we can kind of see what I'm talking about. We'll just add an anchor tag here that says link. As you can see, it's right there. Let's give it an href, which is just the current page, and we'll give it some style so it's just a little bit larger. So we'll just say font size is like 2 rem. There we go, quite a bit bigger. Let's even make it quite a bit bigger than that. We'll do 4 rem. So it's very large and easy to see when we're hovered over top of this or highlighted on it. Now what we can do is go back into our image slider and I want the very first thing that they get to when they enter this section to be the skip link. So it's going to be at the very, very top. We're going to give this here an href, which is going to point to the ID of an element. And that element is going to be at the very end after everything else. So here we're going to create a div. And we're just going to give this an ID. I will say after image slider controls. It doesn't really matter what this ID is. We're just giving it a really easy name so we know what this is representing. Now our href is going to point to that ID. We're going to give it a label specifically for screen readers. We're going to say skip image slider controls. So they know that this is going to skip over everything related to the image slider. I'm then finally going to give this a class and this class name is going to be called skip link. And we're going to add some styles to that skip link. So now you can see we have this button up here, a link specifically. And when I click enter on that link and now I click tab, you notice I'm way down here on this link right here. So I'm able to skip all of the different controls. While normally if I just tab through, you can see I go through all the controls, but if I actually click on this link, I'm now tabbed down here as my main tab, and it lets me skip all of the image slider stuff that I may not care about. So now what we can do is style this. So we have our skip link. Now there are a million different ways to hide something because we want this to only be visible to people that tab onto it that are using screen readers. So one of the easiest ways to make something hidden is we're gonna set the position to absolute. We're going to set the width to one pixel. We're going to set the height to one pixel, adding to zero. We're going to set the margin to negative one pixel. We're going to set the overflow to hidden. And then we're going to be setting here a border of zero. And finally, a clip, which is a rectangle of zero, 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 zero. And this is just a bunch of different ways to hide something. It's going to make sure things that have borders and so on and margins and paddings are all just going to be completely removed. So this is impossible for this thing to be clicked on or found unless you are specifically using a screen reader. Because now if I inspect and I look at my accessibility tab, you can see the very first thing inside my image slider is a link that skips the image slider, which is exactly what we want. But you can't see this or click on it unless you're using the tab key to actually get to it. So now let's actually make it so this is something that can be tabbed onto and actually visible when we tab onto it. So we're going to add a skip link focus visible just like that. And here I just want to put this in the top left corner. So we'll say that this is going to be top of zero, left of zero. We're going to put a border on it of one pixel, solid, black, a background color of white, just so it's really easy to see. There we go. The padding is are going to be 0.5 REM. Our width and height, we're going to change back to auto since we set them to one pixel before. We want them to just be normal. Our margin, we're going to set back to zero. We're going to unset the clip property that we're set. We're going to add a text decoration of none so we don't have any underline on it. And we're going to set the color to black. 
This way it's going to be visible so people know what they're on. So now if we click tab, you can see we're tabbed right onto that, but obviously it's showing up behind our image right now. To fix this, we can really easily just set a Z index on this, be like 100. So now when I tab, you can see it's showing skip image slider controls. And if I want, I can click on that and now I'm below it. Or if I don't want to click on it, I can just tab through the rest of my image slider just like before. So up until this point, most of the accessibility things we've done have been to help people that are either visually impaired or are using screen readers. But sometimes people may prefer certain things on your site. For example, we have a lot of animations on our site and some people don't like a lot of motion in their websites. And there's actually a property called prefers reduced motion we can use. So we can say at media, there we go, at media. And here we can specify prefers reduced motion. And inside of here, we could put special styles for people that specifically prefer reduced motion. In our case, I'm going to assume everyone prefers reduced motion and only the people that don't prefer reduced motion, then we're going to add all of our animations. So all of our animation code is going to go inside of here. And it's only going to be our larger animations. Some of our small animations I'm fine with keeping in there, but our large animations I'm going to specifically put into here, such as the translate property for our image. So where our image is going to be using that translate transition, let's find it right here. I'm going to remove this and move it down into that media query. So we can say dot image slider image. We're going to put that into here. So now since I do not prefer reduced motion, you can see I'm still getting the sliding animation just like before. But if I were to inspect this page, I can actually specify that I do prefer reduced motion. To do this, I can just real simply control shift P type in reduced motion. As you can see, it's right here. By clicking that button, I toggled the property, but if you want to be able to see it, you can go more and you can find rendering. And now inside of here, you can see there's a section specifically down here for emulating prefers reduced motion. So right now I have it set to true. So now you can see when I click, there is no longer any animation for these images being slid around. Another large animation that's not necessary and could be annoying is this squish animation. So I'm going to remove that as well. So I'm just going to search for squish. There we go. That's where we have it. I'm going to take all of this code that's using that squish animation. I'm going to move it down into here. Now we're going to leave that as is. And now you can see I no longer get the squish animation, but I still am getting some animations like this animation right here is one that maybe makes sense to have because it's a visual thing. You could remove it and put it into here if you want, but it's something that's so small. I feel like prefers reduced motion should be perfectly fine with this. It's just some of the larger animations, the big slides and the things that have a lot of motion that you want to minimize. And again, we can come in here, we can set this back to no emulation. So now you can see all these animations are back for the people that actually want them. If you enjoyed this deep dive into building advanced expert level React components, you're absolutely going to love my complete React simplified course, which covers everything you need to know about React for going from knowing absolutely nothing all the way to being a mid-level developer in React, covering incredibly advanced concepts. If that sounds interesting to you, I highly recommend you check out the course. It'll be linked down in the description below.